a little bit of history. One player taking the other one out of a WCS Season 3 last year. This is going to be a, a game from DreamHack. And uh, it's going to have some interesting results, guys. Let's hop right into it. Here in the top left-hand side of Dusk Towers in the blue Brodos trunks, it's my insanity's Pid Drogo. And here in the bottom left-hand side of that very same map, representing Team Carnage Sports, it's our red Zergy McFerguson Namshar. I have no idea if that's how you pronounce it, but that is how I am going to pronounce it, guys. Just saying. I love the fact he's going for a gasless build right now. He's going two hatch. Uh, looks like he got the pool after the two hatches. I wasn't quite watching, but we've got a equally interesting opener out of Pit Drogo, who has elected not to go for that fast cyber core instead of going for two gateways. That's going to indicate a lot of adept pressure or at least some kind of uh, adept defense out of our Protoss. Now Adept, a unit that people either love or hate. Some people think it's the best balanced, most excellently designed thing in the world. Other players think it's Satan's child on Earth. Either way, let us know in the comments below what you think of the Adept unit. I don't want to weigh my own opinion in, but I play Zerg. Let's just leave it at that. That's probably a pretty solid hint as to how I feel about the Adept. Anyways, we're still seeing no gas right now out of Namshar, which could be a little bit of a weakness if Pit Drogo decides to use these Adepts in an offensive capacity. Of course, the probe has scouted that the gas count pretty late right now for our Zerg. Now, why would this mean that Pit Drogo wants to do offense? Well, if a Zerg delays his gas, he's going to have a higher drone count, even faster uh, drone count than the probe count, which can be chrono boosted out by the Protoss. Definitely going to want to get some offensive ability out of his adepts. Going to go ahead and push these this Ling set back as well. And uh, let's see, where are the adepts on the map? Boom, going ahead and moving right on across. <laughs> I love adepts warping right on in. And this queen going to try to zone them a little bit, but again, using that uh, ghost ability to just jump right on wherever they want to go. Ling's trying to predict where they're going to be, but uh, that spawn crawler going to take a couple of shots. But of course, no drones there means that that light armor bonus not going to exist, and he's going to be forced to go ahead and ghost right on out. He does not want to lose those adepts at this point in the game. So right now, only one worker killed by the Protoss. Still getting a little bit of use out of those adepts, but really nice zoning with the queens and some drone, uh, or rather, uh, ling positioning. Keeps the adepts pushed right on off the creep. Great job here by our Zerg, and he is working on getting those gas up and running. And still a little bit of ghosting all over the map, but you know this is the type. This is the time in the game where if you've gone a gasless build, things start to settle down. Pit Drogo having gone for that earlier aggression, he's going to have to transition into something a little bit different. He's still producing two adepts at a time. He's got two more gateways in production, so that's going to be a total of four gates plus two stargates. So he's going to be committing very heavily to a mid-game timing attack with stargates, whereas Namshar. Going for the earlier roaches, not quite uh, with the lair tech just now starting. He's not quite at the hydralists, which could spell a little bit of trouble for him if these uh, stargates get going too quickly. Now, when we see two stargates like this, it could mean uh, that the Protoss is going to be delaying the immortals, disruptors, anything like that. The whole robo line could be delayed, or it could just be a two stargate tech switch. Uh, with a certain number of units, this no uh, two stargate's just going to help get that number a little bit faster. Going to keep an eye on that, see where he decides to go with that. Some scouting around. He's probably not quite sure himself. He wants to see exactly what the Zerg is working with. Now he's got those gases finally completing here for our Zergy McFerguson. He's banking up a lot of gas as well. So we'll see what he decides to do once he hits that layer tech. Fourth base also uh, here on the map. Looks like this queen 
very, very low HP, but the Adept more concerned with getting in here to this third base. Fourth base also completed some really nice creep spread as well, uh, really allowing those Lings to get in position, doing a lot of damage to the Adepts, but of course the Adept's going to ghost right on over here to the natural, and he's going to be forced into pulling these drones off the line, going to try and get them up the ramp, but the Adept's of course going to ghost right on back onto the ramp, trying not to lose as many of the Adepts as he can, and it looks like the Adepts are going to go ahead and get right on out of the base. Only five Adepts left out of that huge clump of Adepts we saw not that long ago. And crazy harassment little battle there. And he is going to go ahead and chase a lot of those adepts right on across the field. We got a little bit of an instant replay coming back for that. See a little bit of the harassment there by those adepts. And, of course, the Zerg in a position where he is harassing as well. A lot of back and forth action going on in this game. Loving, loving it. And the Zerg going to actually park most of his roaches over here uh, at the base of the third base of hit Drogo. He's going to try and force him way up that wide ramp. These wide ramps definitely Zerg friendly. It takes a lot of force fields, uh, but of course the really good force field placement going to peel apart that huge roach clump and I don't know if that's going to be quite enough roaches. There's a lot of pylons overcharged the right there, but ooh, Protoss losing a lot of the units. Pit Drogo, a very solid player, but bleeding the unit count right now. However, he's got the air advantage. He's picking up the roaches one at a time with these phoenixes, and I think that actually is going to be enough. Stalker's trying to pull the roaches back here into the natural so that they do not get up there into that ramp. And I call that the natural. That's actually the third, guys. Just kidding. Anyways, Hydralisks are on the way. The roaches are going to be forced to break, and we've got the Immortals coming with some charge lots as well. Really solid solid play so it is going to be just the phoenix transition out of pit drogo here some great and solid plays hydralisks now out on the field here for our zergy mcferguson hydra upgrades on the way as well as some ravagers Phoenix is coming forward. Ooh, great pickups there by the Hydralisks. Phoenix is trying to park right here on this high ground, but of course <laughs> Roach Hydra Ravager going to his base. He is going to need these Phoenixes in a defensive capacity. He's trying to buy as much time with them, distract the Hydralisks as long as possible, but it looks like he is uh, not going to get that result so he's going to come back on the flanks trying to get over here into uh the rally lines uh while a warp prism coming right along the phoenix's side there um we should see some kind of drop out of the protoss but huge battle going down right now uh at this ramp some great pickups here oh my god pit drogo showing why he is the god of protoss versus zerg great cleanup there of that zerg army really caught the zerg unaware there namshar uh did not want to lose that many units that was a huge investment of lost units there absolutely huge Looks like our save didn't work for the instant replay feature. Oh, well, it's okay. Nice little drop here by Pit Drogo. Doing a lot of damage here. My god. The Archons, the Phoenix. Going and killing off that fourth base. Fourth base of Pit Drogo also in production. Crazy game crazy game pit drogo coming up with a huge advantage only 10 supply advantage though not that much in workers but he's got quite an army advantage and with this uh fourth base if he can just secure this he will be worlds ahead of his opponent his opponent did have this uh fourth base for a little while but uh this one's a lot faster now and he'll start mining a lot quicker Four base to four base definitely favors the Protoss in this matchup. Zerg really, really likes to be a base ahead. Sometimes even two bases ahead in the Legacy of the Void because there is so much trading going on. And really against Protoss, you have to constantly be trading because the Protoss Death Ball is real. When people talk about the Protoss Death Ball, you know, that's really something you think about Wings of Liberty style, but it's even true in Legacy of the Void once it gets big enough. Uh, those units just mesh together so, so, so well. 
And we've actually got a Spire coming for our Zerg, as well as the Lurker Den, the Hive. We're going to be seeing a lot of uh, tech switches, I believe, out of the Zerg. Of course, he's not going to want to go straight into uh, Mutalisks or anything like that, as there are seven Archons. Oh, there's the Greater Spire. So he's actually going to be going for the Broodlord composition. Very solid against the low-range Archons. With Hydralisk support, he'll, he'll he'll really enjoy that composition. I love how this uh, matchup is starting to get fleshed out. And of course, it'll become a battle for air dominance at that point. Once the Broodlords, if the Broodlords are able to establish themselves, uh, those Stargates really come back into play. Loving the creep spread here by Namshar. That is a huge defensive bonus. Love seeing our Zergs focus on that. And here we go, we are about to have a massive battle here, charge lots uh, coming in, tanking a lot of the damage, Archons in the middle ground doing a lot of damage, also there to absorb damage if the Zealots get out of position. The Immortals, really the damage dealer though, in the back of that army, really going to melt those Roaches, the Hydralisks of course, Glass Cannons, whatever attacks them is going to kill them if they're able to get attacked at all. And as you can see, there's not much of a buffer there between the Hydralisks and the Protoss army. Great composition here by Pit Drogo, who's about 40 army supply ahead of his opponent, um, 43 or so. Uh, and, and that's actually huge when the Protoss army is up in your face as a Zerg player and you cannot get all your army together. Um, it, it really becomes difficult, but knocking out that fourth base, going ahead and retreating, I love how Pitchurgo is doing this when you are ahead, get more ahead. That's the old Artosis Creed, and it really stays true in this matchup. Protoss, there's no reason for the Protoss to want to break that third. Uh, the third's about to mine out. There's no resources there. There might be some technology, might be a little bit of production, but there's no mining resources. And no matter how much technology you have, or technology researching buildings, no matter how much production you have. If you don't have resources, you're not going to utilize it. And that's what's important to Pit Drogo really playing this game. Going ahead, taking the fifth base while his opponent's still struggling to hold a fourth. This guy, definitely one of the best French players out there right now at this moment. Amazing play. Now we've got the Psy Storm being researched as well as the plus, I believe that's plus three attack upgrades for our Protoss player. Wow. He is at 200, 200. He's ready to move out. So, how does Namshar get back into this game? It's going to have to be with some very pesky harassment, but even then, I think with Pit Drogo reaching that max, it's going to come down to the Broodlords uh, and, and controlling the air. Does Pit Drogo know that Broodlords is the ultimate composition that Namshar is going for? And if Pit Drogo doesn't realize that, will Namshar have the time? and the resources to get those Broodlords online. He's buying himself time right now with these Lings, great plays. It's forcing Pit Drogo not to attack with that Death Ball army, constantly pulling the Death Ball army back for defensive purposes every time it tries to move out onto the field. Beautiful, beautiful textbook play by Namshar. I just don't know if it's gonna be enough. I'm really, really afraid for the guy. But looking at the uh, units count, we've got six Broodlords online. And as far as anti-air, there's only, what? three phoenix on the field this could actually go namshar's way if he pulls this off right he's just got to get those phoenixes dead as quickly as possible now lurkers are on the field but oh a little bit of a mistake here by namshar that the lurkers are out of position and the broodlord's gonna try and come right here knocking down uh some of the archon wall but the uh, huge number of immortals taking that fourth base out so easily like i said those the the zerg army too out of position here at the third base unable to defend that fourth base and the third base a little bit too spread out ouchie wow i caramba and again, Protoss just takes out the fourth base, and now he's kiting backwards. He is never overextending himself. I love this textbook play, and actually getting a great little concave here at this choke point. Um, wow. Killing off a lot of the Zerg army in a very cost-effective manner there. And getting the Zealots into the Greater Spire. If he can get that, and it looks like he will, 
That's definitely going to be GG. Broodlords are really the only thing keeping Namshar alive here. We'll see if he, uh, he he's going to try and push this, but the Tempests are there, and those are really the hard counter, if such a thing exists, to the Broodlords. And there's the GG out of Namshar, taking a loss here against my insanities, Pedrogo. That was an excellent love seeing games like that, especially when they go later into the mid-game. And, you know, even into that late-game stage with the Broodlords, uh, Namshar, you know, he had a really solid game plan. Um, he just kept losing that fourth base due to the way he was positioning his units. If you actually come back and take a look here at the minimap, you'll see that, uh, his creep spread was very far extended in all directions. And during that time, the fourth base was safe. But when he lost that attack there, um, the initial fourth base attack, all this creep spread died with it. Pedrogo did a great job killing that off, and ever since that point, the fourth base was completely doomed. Uh, when he was parked right here with his broodlords, and here with the lurkers, it really left all of this room to attack the fourth base. And that's a little bit of a problem. Because every time that the Protoss is able to keep the Zerg on three bases, and the Protoss has three bases, this little cluster right here, the Zerg's behind. He needs to be the base ahead. So these units really should have been parked more along kind of this little flank right here. And it would have had, you know, some of the ability to, the Protoss could have run behind it. And of course, we still would have had that vulnerability to the drops, which really hurt Namjar. But this fourth base would have been safe. We could have eliminated some of the issues here with static defense and even some of the issues here with static defense to allow some of those roaches perhaps to reposition. But ultimately it came down to heart of the swarm positioning versus legacy of the void positioning the units compositions that zerg was using in heart of the swarm a lot more mobile could have repositioned to the fourth base from the position that namshar had them in the third in legacy of the void with the emphasis on uh, lurkers and then of course the brood lords not quite the case and i think it was more of a failure to adapt by Namshar than it was anything, uh, but Pit Drogo, very solid player. We saw that drop, we saw some text creep spreadage, uh, killage, I mean just amazing stuff there by Pit Drogo. Namshar playing a very solid game, showing the importance of that creep spread. Guys, there's dogs barking in the background, I have no idea if you can hear it, but I hope you enjoyed the cast. It's been my pleasure. Bye bye. If you like this cast, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of the games you watched today. If you thought, you know, the cast was good, let me know. If you thought I could have done something better, let me know. I try to aim for a more of an educational style cast, but while still, you know, mixing in the entertainment every now and then, uh, really catching those dramatic moments in the game. So if you have any comments or want to let us know your feedback, please just post them in the comments below. Make sure you give us a subscribe. This is Shaft, the Planning Casting Crew, signing out. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us. It's been my pleasure to present this to you. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. As always, I'm honored that you came to this channel. And if you're staying for the credits, then clearly you enjoyed this content. If so, please be a super fan. Go ahead and hit subscribe. Subscribe to us on Twitter, twitter.com slash the only shaft. It's listed right here. And, you know, if you're a super, super, super fan, visit us on Patreon, patreon.com slash the only shaft. I couldn't ask for better fans than you guys. You're amazing. Remember that, and have a great day.